Hello everybody and welcome to this 15th chapter in the Java AE 7 tutorial series. In the previous chapter we had learned about creating your components either from scratch or as a combination of other components. Creating custom UI components are similar to how this would work. Now custom UI components are um, a part of JSF that provides a wide range of UI components for us to use, but the majority of these UI components are one-to-one -one maps to the elements in HTML4. This can limit the functionality you may have wanted for your application. To combat this, JSF has uh, allowed a full customization of the UI components to allow developers to create their own custom components for their work. Now, you may also want to be able to change the look and feel of a component depending on what output device it is displayed on, like for example, a desktop versus a mobile app. To accompany this need, JSF allows you to separate the definition and the appearance of the component to allow you to create one definition of the component and create multiple renders of it for different client device types like mobiles, tablets, and computers. Now let's take a look at what, um, what's the criteria for um, creating custom components or renders. So these are the times when you want to create a custom uh, component. A custom a component class defines the state and behavior of a UI component, for example, validation. Um, when you need to add more behaviors to your pre-existing standard component, or you want to take advantage of an HTML capability offered by your target browser. You should not create a custom component if you want to combine two components into one, in which case you would use a composite component. You need to manipulate data, in which case you want to use managed beans and when you need to convert, validate, or listen for data. In that case, you would use converters, listeners, and validators. So when to use a custom renderer? A renderer can be thought of as a client adapter. It decodes the incoming request into the local value of the component and encodes it while it's being sent back to the client as a response. JSF supports two programming models for encoding and decoding. First, there's direct implementation, where the component class itself implements the decoding and encoding, while there's also delegated implementation, which is a separate render that takes care of the decoding and encoding, allowing one component to have multiple renderers. You can use both implementations if you're not sure if multiple renders will be used in the future, and make delegated implementation default. Now let's take a look at component render and tag combinations. When a custom component is created, a custom render is created for it. A custom tag is used to bind those two together. Facelets creates a custom tag or tag hand handler, which we'll be calling it later on, automatically. Now let's take a look at understanding the image example, which we'll be seeing um, in the later tutorials. So the example that we'll be looking at is uh, a, an example of, let's say we have a bookstore that is operated by our fellow Duke, and it has a custom image map component, which means that uh, it has a component that maps out every book that you see on a bookshelf. This image map displays a selection of six book titles, and each book title is a link that goes to a page that displays the title and the info of the book. The page also allows the adding of the book to the shopping cart. So let's think, uh, let's think about what we can do. First, we can either put the component on the server side so the server and the component can talk to each other very quickly. But the problem is the client, let's say it ha uh, asks for a request, uh, it will take a long time for like requests to go and responses to send back. So maybe you thought of the idea, let's move to the component to the client side. Now, this becomes a problem for the server side now. What if the client, his, um, uh, his internet is slow or like um, his latency is very high so like the, he can't communicate with the server very quickly? So it's the same problem. Now, this is where JSF is used. JSF tech is ideal um, for use for implementing this kind of image map because it can handle the parts of the application that needs to be performed on the server while allowing the other parts of the application to be performed on the client side. So now let's get into custom component classes. When creating a custom component class, you must uh, either implement UI component base or a class that extends it. If your custom component has a very similar purpose as another component class, then you should just extend from that component class instead of implementing UI component base and starting from scratch.
For example, if you wanted to create an editable menu, it would make more sense to extend from the UI select one because all that's different is the ability to edit the menu. There are many other behavioral instances that you may want to implement as well, but we won't go that deep into the specifics. The behavior defined by the component class is as follows. So first of all, there's decoding and encoding, which converts the request parameter for decoding to the uh, component's local value, and encoding is converting the local value into the corresponding markup, so basically vice versa of each other. They're saving the state of the component, and there's updating the bean value with the local value, processing validation of the local value, and queuing for events. Now, if you choose to delegate to a renderer, like you saw before, you can either do it in, in the class or you can create a separate render for um, this encoding and decoding. Your custom component class must override the getFamily method of UI component to return the identifier of a component family. So in, the, in this example, let's say uh, we have our component and we have our map render. This component will have the getFamily method, which returns the quote unquote map which allows the component to find this render and then um, let it like process through and then it will come out as a fully rendered component. Now let's take a look at delegating rendering to a renderer. To delegate rendering, you perform uh, these tasks. So you create the renderer class you register the renderer with the render kit by using the at faces render annotation, and you identify the renderer type in the faces render annotation. So let's take a look at this example. Uh, in here, you'll see that first you create the renderer class, which is our area renderer, and it extends renderer. And you have our registering the renderer by saying component family equals area, and the renderer type will be demo area, which is where um, you identify the renderer type. Now. Let's get into event listeners. JSF supports action and value change events. Action events occur when a user uh, activates a component, like clicking on a link or like hovering over something. And a value change event occurs when a user actively changes the user or user value of a component, which let's say like you, you say like type in your age and you change the value from null to let's say 10. So now let's take a look at uh, using a, compo a custom component. To use a custom component, you must first define any custom tags used in the component to the TLD file. So the TLD file is like a configuration file, just like web.xml. Uh, but in this case, T TLD file is uh, basically like the stuff that um, you c create the custom tags and you have to define it in here for you to use it. Now then to, uh, for you to use it, then you have to include the namespace inside your page. So it has access to the tags. And then finally, add the tag uh, components tag to the page. And this example shows the different ways that you can use the bookstore tag over here um, in your code. Now let's take a look at creating and using a custom converter. A JSF converter class converts objects to strings and vice versa when needed. If you need a custom converter, at a minimum, it must be able to convert data both ways. In this case, over here, um, you can see that we can use the annotation add faces converter which has which has its own oh, its own name, and uh, you can create a converter to cr uh, convert from an object to a string or a string to an object. And here in this example, what it does is, um, if we look closely, you can see that um, this whole block of text it removes hyphens and spaces in credit card numbers, which is pretty useful when you want to like take uh, credit cards um, as a form of payment in your website. And to convert data from presentation view to model view, your converter class um, must implement the uh, converter and override the get as object. So that's converting from your presentation view to your model view. Now, let's say we want to do the opposite. Uh, we want to convert from the object view to, uh, or the model view to the presentation view. Now, all you got to do is to take a look at this example right here. And uh, yeah, so it ch checks if uh, the, the message throws an error, if the data is not a string compatible, and it adds spaces for every four characters. So basically, it converts, all you, uh, it converts your model view credit card number into a credit card number that you can see later on in the presentation. 
And that wraps it up for this video, everybody. I hope you learned a lot about creating custom UI components and other custom objects as well. And uh, in the next chapter, we will be talking about how to configure JSF applications. So um, I'll see you in the next video.